Luke, the majority. Luke was the snack guy, and then Henry. Henry did snacks because he had a peanut allergy, so he got snacks that he, could, <laughs> he knew he could have. So I grew up in a town of like 500 people. The nearest Walmart was two hours away. The nearest McDonald's was two hours away. Like it was very secluded area. Oh, but but this light with this camera, I mean, I the guy looks make, good. Look you at make this any more private, we'll just start calling you the fiddler. <laughs> <laughs> For everybody hopping in, we got Tucker Craft fan favorite, tight end, Mr. Tight End You himself. Um, the the sexiest South Dakota man I know. I gotta stop calling our guests sexy. Yeah, you, you've been getting a little too sexual. <laughs> yeah, but but this light with this camera. I mean, I mean the guy looks make, good. Look you make this any more private? We'll just start calling you the diddler. <laughs> <laughs> ND, ND, ND. Um, <laughs> hey man. So you know we're we're game day a couple days ago. Just want to know. You know, start off. We got a bunch of Packer fans that listen to the pod. What's the vibes of the team, man? What's the vibes with you? What's kind of you good? You chilling? How's uh, your body feeling? Four weeks in? I'm feeling good. Yeah. The last, the the game two and game three were very physical games, heavy run games. That was fun to get those out of the way. <laughs> uh, but now we know that the offense can run the ball, like really, like guys are dialed in, mm -hmm. you know, um, to the run game. Oh, I get, we had to be, but... Yeah, I mean, I feel pretty good. I'd say major setback for me was, like, first snap of the Colts game. Sprained my AC joint. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Coming off the pec. Yeah, coming <laughs> off the pec. Yeah, so I tore my pec, like, four months ago. May 6th, had surgery on the 8th. Got married on the 18th. In the sling? Partially, you know. <laughs> we, we took it off every now and then. But, yeah, 10, day, 10 days after I had surgery on my pec, I'm married. Just a crazy three months just flew by. You know, training camp, all the rehab. You know, you I, you were there. Mm -hmm. You know, we were grinding. And, uh, yeah, then then week one, week two, I mean, we're here. Like, just crazy how yeah. fast that, that those things fly by. Just get your head down. But, no, yeah, body feels great. Yeah. Was a, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, it was a shit time. Uh, but, no, I feel great. I feel yeah. great now. Well, yeah, you, I feel all right. You talked, about, you talked about kind of those last couple of weeks being heavy run, heavy run game plans. And I think something that pretty much every Packer fan likes about you, and I've always loved about you, especially as a running back, is kind of your play style and, like, how you kind of go out there. And sometimes it's, it's almost a little old school, just like gritty. You play football the right way. Um, in my opinion. And so, you know, you do more than just catch the ball. Uh, you, you block. Like, what's your mindset out there when you got to go line up and block against a DN and just, like, you're, you do tap into a different mode. Like, you, I was talking to you after the game, and I was like, hey, you're a bad man. Like, where does that mindset come from, that play style? Like, I didn't really start developing that until, like, way later in the year after, after Luke had gotten hurt and I was kind of just, like, thrown in there. Like, towards the end of that year, or towards the end of last year, I started figuring it out, like, you know, how to play with that aggression. And then, you know, as, as soon I would just, just kind of picked it up like it, it never left when training camp came around, especially with that joints practice with the Ravens. Yeah. Yeah, that was, like, the first time I really got to, like, hit people because I wasn't just hitting my own teammates all the time. So, um, it just, it just kind of comes to, like, one, I never want the guy I'm blocking to be in on the tackle. Mm-hmm. Like, I think if I can just start there, then the rest of it's just technique. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, really, you know, and I was even talking about this with another guy. Um, like, the tight end position is just about consistency. Like, consistently winning your one-on-one -on -one matchups in a run game. You know, if you're, if you're winning, as a tight end in the NFL, if you're winning your one-on-one -on -one matchup, like, 75 80 percent of the time then you're you're doing really well yeah. like some some tight ends in this league cannot block it's like really hard to watch the film sometimes <laughs> and that's something like i'd be able to pride myself on if you can block coaches are going to at least put you in there for that yeah. and that's when i figured it out especially in college but to to now like to define my play style you know do the easy things first and then you know the rest will follow like what's your what's your ideal run play? I feel like you know you could either square up a uh, defensive end, or do you like to do the swipe blocks? 
I mean, do you like to get in motion, get running at people, or do you like just square up? I like, uh, I mean, it's, it's a pretty popular run. We refer to it as quattro. Um, everybody runs it, whether it even four across or five across. It's just an outside zone play. Just like getting the opportunity to work with another tight end um, and, and taking a, the Sam linebacker up to the mic. It's, it's just like a, a play that it's a, can be really, really good for your offense if the tight ends can block it efficiently. And like, it just pretty much comes from us in the front side tackle. Yeah, it's a big hitter play, right? Like if, yeah. If you, if you guys seal it. Yeah. Would you rather decleat a D end or catch a touchdown? I mean, it just depends on what I had already done in, in the you, game. <laughs> game it's, uh, you're only going to have – the game is solid. You had a great game regardless, but no big plays. Oh. You're either going to be on Sports Center for, like, mossing a linebacker one-on-one coverage in the end zone you score, or you decleat, like, Pro Bowl D end. And, like, also – in the run yeah like but when your running back knows like i i'd take the d cleat option for sure uh are you a, are you a shit talker during games and do you initiate do you, do you sit back and wait for somebody to say something tucker just yells yeah <laughs> i just scream <laughs> <laughs> yeah if someone's just like trying to talk at me i just like start screaming i don't give them a chance to even finish just yelling? I'm just yelling at him. <laughs> Catch him off guard. No, or I just say some really weird things. We got to get you mic'd up. Yeah. That would be good. That would be terrible. I would get canceled. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling people I'm going to burn their childhood homes down. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm coming for you. I'm yeah. here all day. Yeah. When, what, what does that stem from? Does that, uh, is that from, like, the NFL you got in started talking trash or, like, high school, college? You kind of picked up on some things? No, it's usually pretty random. I never... I didn't really do it in high school. Um, college, yeah, a little bit more. But, like, once I came to the league, I started playing with a little bit more of an edge. And, uh, like, when I like when I know what I'm doing on the field and I'm doing it well, like, things just slow down and it just becomes really fun. Like, the game really just feels like a game. And that's when you can, like, start – you know, playing the game within the game, like changing your stance up, looking at guys, calling out fake things, and just playing ball. Yeah, because like they have all this film on you. I don't want them to know what I'm doing. Yep. And talking crazy comes with that as well. Just I saying, like yeah, just off things. the wall. They're like, I, I thought he was such a nice guy. He's from a little baby South Dakota. Like, what yeah. you, what's the what's that process like? You know, I I know people like joke about it, but what's that process like? And Green Bay, people always talk about Green Bay not being a, a big city and stuff like that. Coming from South Dakota to being here, was it kind of like a seamless move for you? Do you feel comfortable now? It's year two in Green Bay and kind of, I don't know, put the, I, I've never been to South Dakota, so kind of paint a picture for us. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, so I grew up in a town of like 500 people. Mm -hmm. The nearest Walmart was two hours away. Nearest McDonald's two hours away. Like it was very secluded area. And there's towns around, but they're each they're forty miles away and they're the same size, if not smaller. So um that's what it was like. And then I went to college, a town of twenty four thousand people. And so Green Bay is the largest city I've lived in. Um but I, I knew I like I don't when I go back it's I'm not saying it's a like a distraction, mm -hmm. but I don't have like a place to train. Yep. I don't want to, I, I love being home and I love all the support I get from everybody at home. And I couldn't be more thankful. Like every time I go back home, I don't want the focus just to, I want people just to treat me like yeah. I'm a regular guy, mm -hmm. but that's not, that's not going to happen. So I, I thought I'll just buy a house here. And that's what I did in February. and well not the strength coaches yeah. but uh at least like show, i'm shown face in the building i'm getting all the free rehab and everything i need here so yeah i thought that was a great idea you show your midwest roots though i mean did you have a little side project this uh oh yeah this summer <laughs> yeah i did some handy manning yeah. handy manning yeah handy manning it's a burp yeah you did something so i did some cool woodworking things like i built a sauna 
Ooh, dimensions. Yeah. Oh. How hot does it get in that sauna? You 205 said. degrees. <laughs> oh, my God. You <laughs> cook a pizza in there, man. Yeah. That would be, that would These be guys good. like, yeah, I was in my sauna. I left. I couldn't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're supposed to build them with vents, apparently. I didn't know that. No, was. no vents. <laughs> it's just, so it's just, just a boiling oven. pot. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so that gets hot. Um, cedar. Cedar sauna. Uh, it's like 104 square feet. Would you say your sauna is better than the Packers sauna that we have? Yes. Yeah. Because people just aren't blowing their nose and <laughs> spitting oh, on the yeah. ground. And, yeah, it is the worst. Yeah, and it's like 20 years newer. And, yeah. But I mean, as far as size, that thing is. That is it the massive. same? We need to get you Kraft mac and cheese deal. Mm. Why does that not happen? Well, you know what I did in college? Mm. Was I like, said so like day one of tweeting it, Kraft mac and cheese until they sponsor me or something like that. I did that for like 15 days. Come on, man. You, got, you need more persistence than that. Yeah. Well, 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 we'll start that. Do you like Kraft mac and cheese? Yeah, but I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know, would, would they put me on a box of Kraft uh, mac and cheese? Of course. That'd be great. I, I'm yeah. trying to think of what the slogan would be right now, but it could be like touchdowns and pancakes. Mac and cheese pancakes. <laughs> mac and cheese pancakes. <laughs> mac and cheese pancakes. That'd be I'd, great for Wisconsin. What kind of commercial would that look like? Like... I, I think you in the kitchen with like, like pads, like just. Oh no, you just pancake someone and then it's like turn into the, like a macaroni. <laughs> oh, that would be macaroni. sick. Like over the table, <laughs> yeah. like into a pan. Hmm. That'd be great. So Kraft Mac and Cheese, sponsor Talking Kraft. Make that happen. Um, I do want to bring up, since you talked about college, we're going to do a little Instagram deep dive. Mm-hmm. What we do with the. So you don't post too much, um, we found. But we do have, um, we did find some fun stuff. And we did go into the tagged photos. We did go to the Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of getting deals, uh, tell me about, do you still go to GNC often? Or how was, uh, how'd this come about? I, I've never seen, I just think you got such a baby face here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I used to work at a GNC. Okay. In college. So roots. Straight from the roots. Yeah. Yeah, I used to um, give them. The creatine and the mass gainer, and tell them that they probably shouldn't do that because it really mess up their People coming to GNC looking for steroids. Yeah, I, that's, <laughs> there's there's things that you could buy at GNC that can help you like make meth. There's a really? whole bunch of stuff at GNC. Is is there anything? Are, is there stuff at GNC that's illegal in the NFL? Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You don't take anything unless it has like that NSF third party yeah. certified. So people are coming in looking for needles. No, no. <laughs> they're like they're coming just in. For looking the, for like they're coming in for the, they're coming in for the ingredients. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> ingredients. Look at you. You're like a little dare officer, man. I, <laughs> <laughs> he is the dare lion. Oh, Another sponsorship. Dare, dare. craft. Tucker craft. <laughs> uh, yep. <laughs> speaking of speaking of uh, making healthy choices, and this is off season, by the way. So you're just having a good time, you know. Uh, he posted this is off season. Uh, just yes. you know, a little little dart, little beer, like. That's not looks mine. Like, looks like you're having a great day. <laughs> I'm holding it for my brother. Because it fell on the ground, yeah, obviously. Because he has another one. And yeah, he was smoking two of them. And yeah, yeah, and you were just I was facilitating. holding another one I'm, for him. And it was cold, so you're probably just making sure your hands were warm. Yeah, that's exactly what was All going right. on. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, well, I mean, we can kind of continue on that. You went to uh, the Beer Olympics, though, too, in the office. I did. Before. That was fun. Yeah, what was yeah. that experience like? And well, who housed the most beers? I think it was probably either DeForest Buckner and George Kittle or the winners. Oh, I think they were the, I don't remember um, who probably one of them because they were in the championship game at least. How many uh, many beers were consumed? I think if you did the math, it was like each person drank a 12 pack in in like three, eight, four hours. I mean, it wasn't crazy. That's not, yeah, I mean, that's that's not That's very doable. But like people were drinking on the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Casuals, so, you gotta have casuals. With yeah, the Olympics. I mean, it's yeah. Like, talk about being hydrated. There was like a tattoo artist there. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Just in there case was you like, want to make well, some great decisions. Yeah, there was like a ton of uh, like Lucy, the nicotine pet. Like the sponsors were there. Yeah. There was oh, food cool. vendors. Kane's Chicken was there. Like, was it, it a barstool cool. event? No. Yeah, it was. Because it was like it's busted with the boys who does it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 
It was a barstool event. But that was cool. Yeah, being able to see like awesome. Midland and Hardy and Jelly Roll hanging out with yeah, Taylor man. and Will, Shane Gillis. Um, who's the dude that eats ice cream on the Bloody Balls? Bloody Balls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's comedians there, Bert, Dean Stanfield. Yeah, it was, it was that's a good a great, time. Yeah, that's a great line. It was a great time. I'm probably missing some people, but it was fun. How'd you get, Bach was like, are you the best beer drinker from South Dakota? Or? Well, he just assumed since I'm fresh out of a state college and I'm still in. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, I, I think I let him down. Um, oh, no. Yeah, things, things tear to my eye, actually. We'll get you back in shape for, for next year. Yeah, I don't yeah. think they're going to invite me. I post too much of an actual threat. Ooh. So they didn't want me back. I don't know. I've never seen you booze, brother. But that's just That's a lie. That's you and I <laughs> have booze before. Just me, brother. Just can't, beers. Can't yeah, just beers, but I can't cannot cannot right. recall. I'd like to go back to the uh South Dakota questions. Uh what makes the difference between a South Dakota guy and a North Dakota guy? Or are they the same person? Oh, I don't know. North Dakota I feel like is more oil. Oh, you're getting you're getting like specific. I'm just talking about like a straight up dude off the street. Like, well, that's who do, who do you who North do you, Dakota and South Dakota are only they're separated by that. But like, really, it's East River versus West River. What's what's that? So on the the west side of South Dakota, there's here's the Missouri River. Okay, and then here's the east side. South so Dakota. it's really East and West Dakota. Yes, it really should be not North and South. Ah. I did not know that. I had no idea about that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's where you notice, like, anyways, like, the, the most, like, geological changes in the state happen after you cross the river. Is but, it still on the east or west side? Yeah. But, yeah. Most of the time, we uh, never like kids from East River. Hmm. See, that, west that's, side? that's what we're trying to get into, man. I don't, I, the geographical stuff is great, but I want to know if, I I saw, I knew if I was, I'm seeing a South Dakota man right there, do I trust him or the North Dakota guy? What am I looking for? East and what west. Is, or yeah, yeah, East East Dakota, West Dakota guy. Who are you having a beer with? There's you only eight hundred thousand people in the state <laughs> of South Dakota, bro. Yeah, they're all the same. We're hitting the big numbers here. <laughs> they're, all, yeah, they're all, all the same. same. <laughs> Why don't you just combine it and just make one big Dakota? Oh, I don't know. That's really that's a, that's a great question. Forty nine states. Stamp it. <laughs> we need to get to sixty nine states. Sixty nine. Oh. Who would you add? Yeah, I don't know. Are, no. are we, are we well, dividing? The UP, the UP should be its own state. You're adding Puerto Rico for sure. Yeah. Some territories. Virgin Islands are mm. technically not states. We could make them states. We, we can make, make and states. we we can make them all their individual states instead of one. Big. We could break California in half. We can break that into a third. Oregon could get cut in half. Oregon wants to get cut in half. I know. Let's get political. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Oregon, we got too many. <laughs> Speaking of Oregon, Musgrave, Oregon State, your guy is uh, who? Who do you say is your favorite? I, I guess on paper, would you would think Musgrave? Like, who's like one of your favorite guys in the tight end room? Well, Luke and Ben. Yeah, Luke's Luke's a real goofy guy. Like, once you actually get to know him, he's pretty fun. Like, you know him. Yes. Like he's. Always loaded with a joke. Yeah. He's always got something. Uh, just have a great position coach, and that's what makes the room close too, because he's just kind of like the facilitator of, you know, all the all yeah, the all the personalities. Yeah, so it's it's great. What's the process like? Because I I've walked into your room, and you guys have probably some of the best selections of snacks. I would say out of the position. Lies. Room. You got. You've never been to the old line room. Uh, I've got. I mean, well, that's different. I that's mean, that's, quantity that's, over quality. Yeah, I mean that. No, no the they, old, they no, got the, the whole thing. The old line room is different, <laughs> like and as it should be. But that room is off limits. Yeah, that <laughs> they, they got the best of everything. It's the biggest room. Yeah, by far. And they got the biggest people, so they yeah, have the yeah. best snacks. What What does the process look like for people like? As a rookie, like, what's that process look like about getting your snacks? How did you go about it when you had to get them? Well, you have to elect somebody. So we broke up the rookie responsibilities. I did the decorations. So I decorated for Halloween. Christmas. Christmas. And, uh, I mean, they also helped decorate for Christmas. But Yeah, you did the majority. Luke was the snack guy. And then Henry. Mm -hmm. Henry did snacks because he had a peanut allergy. So he got snacks that he, could, <laughs> he knew he could have. That's fine. Um, 
Yeah, Luke's about Luke Shadadir. He's about to bring in some venison. Mm. Venison bring, sausage. Where do you where do you bring it? Uh, I don't know. Oh, he took the maple wood. Uh, Let's yeah. go. Maple wood meats has the best meat <laughs> in the state. <laughs> they do. They do. They, they do. The they venison do. sausage is the best. <laughs> It is the summer sausage, fantastic. I I, I get that. The, you love the tube steak. The tube steak, <laughs> it's fantastic. So you're a little bit of a hunter yourself, right? Uh, yeah, I don't get a chance to do too often. You, but I, I'm assuming you hunted birds in yes, South Dakota. Big pheasant hunter in South Dakota. What's a pheasant? A Chinese ringneck pheasant. So it's um, like a dog. Yeah, I don't know. It's just that I, I think they call them prairie chickens too. Oh, but. Uh, yeah, they're just, it's a really pretty bird, multicolor. They got like a, I mean, it's just like a chicken, except it can fly. Chickens can it's fly. It's more evasive. Chickens can fly. Okay, whatever. <laughs> you say. Did you know turkeys can fly? What? No. T- yes, yes, they can. If you push them off a. No, 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 tree. they can fly. No, 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 tree. they can fly. I saw, there's there's a turkey, there's these. Turkeys. You have a lot of turkeys at your house. Yeah, they walk in my backyard all the time, and I saw one fly from the ground up into the tree. Not. You took a video of it and played it in reverse? or No, no, no. Turkeys can fly, bro. And at Boston College, we had turkeys, and they would be up on the roof. I'd be like, what the – how the hell did they get up there? I'm dead serious. Uh. Are you, are you, <laughs> you calling me a liar? I guess. Have you I'm never not. seen a turkey fly? What, what flies higher, seen. a turkey or a chicken? What? I don't know. This is a really good part. What do you say? What, what flies higher? Turkeys. Oh, yeah, I suppose a turkey could probably fly higher if it can fly. Chickens, are bare, <laughs> chickens just can't ju- fly. Chickens just jump and fall slow. <laughs> Bro, turkeys can fly, man. Okay. I'm telling you. Do you, okay. have, do you have turkeys in South Dakota? Yeah, I mean, we have some. <laughs> There's not a lot of trees in South Dakota, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess wherever they go. <laughs> like half the state has trees. The other half is just flat. <laughs> yeah, the east side. Oh, uh, I'm sure. That's too funny. Yeah. Well, I, I will make sure I go. After this, I'll send you a video. I'll just have uh, like my outdoor camera just every time a turkey's back there. We get a lot of deer in my backyard. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Are you, did you get chickens yet? Weren't you going to get chickens? <laughs> I haven't built a chicken coop yet. This guy's been talking about building a chicken coop in his backyard for like five years. I've only known him for two. I going to say, who's the, uh, who's the biggest hick on the team? Because I've heard some stories of some other guys who have, you know, Actually, went and got some animals. And I think also, Coop. I yeah. think Coop might be the actual, the biggest hick on the team. He's got a horse. Edwin Cooper. He's got a farm. He's got a farm. Yeah, he's got a whole farm. That is. He lives like thirty minutes away. I gotta, I gotta <laughs> really? go. I gotta go check his place out. <laughs> yeah, he drives like a. I think he drives a big old lifted GMC. Is that the white, white GMC? one? Yeah, the, yeah. That's like it's. Oh, wait, probably, I probably shouldn't talk about his vehicle. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he drives a big old truck. I, I, you're right. I think that nobody in Green Bay will know that <laughs> the humongous truck. Yeah, I've seen like a thousand with Texas yes. with Texas plates is not a, it's not a Packer player. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, yeah, you know, they already know what my pickup looks like. So. Yeah, we called out on that one. Really? How so? Just pulled up on a stoplight and like, Tucker Craft, get no. out! No, no, just waiting. That's yeah. not. That's not so bad. Yeah, it's not. It's not no. terrible. No, it's not. It's pleasant. What's your speaking of you know pleasant fans? What's your least favorite place to play so far? I know you haven't played everywhere yet, but has there been any? We were talking to Christian Yalich last week about um, like fans heckling and the you know mm. the good the good comebacks that they have and stuff. But has there been a place so far? Maybe not. You don't like to play, but like that their fans are just they're just rough. Wow, I don't even know. Not playing with a lead in yeah Rambo. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, wow. I, saw, I saw fans leaving. I was out there. I saw fans leaving like the third quarter. I'm like, bro, it's about, just about to get good. There's so much game left. Why would you like? And then, and then if if the thought process is, oh, I'll be the first one out of the parking lot. I promise you, you're not the only person thinking that. <laughs> that was that's the gold package, though. Oh. Yeah, that, that is true. Milwaukee ticket holders. No, but I don't know. I I probably say Detroit just because the mood there is so yeah. weird. That stadiums. I was like the mood drains. Them. Hunger yeah. Games. Yeah, just a big rectangle. Ah, uh, just harsh vibes. Yeah. yeah, you ever just scream at a fan <laughs> like a player? That might be that might be your next bit. Yeah, I might I might have to <laughs> just spit scream Come at a man. fan. <laughs> yeah, just get Bobby go Bobby Boucher on a fan. Yeah. <laughs> my, my, mama, my mama said my, my mama said. 
We gotta we gotta get you a touchdown celebration. I feel like you don't really have a nice signature celebration on the first down yet. Or he does a he does a spike, but I I just don't. Both well, times it's gone off frame. Yeah, but did it go? But like it did. Does it count if the spike goes off frame horizontally? Yeah, from the south side. Mm -hmm. Does Lambo go east and west or north and south? North and south. This guy's great with geography. I, I'm from here. So. Well, I know, I know some. <laughs> yeah, they don't always go north and south, but yeah, then it would be shooting from the the, the west direction mm -hmm. in that end zone view. Yeah, he goes out of frame. All right. Well, I, I just I feel like you're somebody with so much personality that we got to come. Like we need to start thinking signature things, signature craft cocktails. <clears throat> <laughs> I got it. Craft cocktails with a K. Yeah. Have you ever thought about that before? A, a bar business, business or? Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just coming up with this as I'm coming up with it, bro. Just, you want me to do a celebration? Me mixing a martini or something? That'd be pretty. Just sick. make mac and cheese. I got to right just. I got to start my. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, what? Yeah, like, what did he say? No, that actually don't be too bad. Uh, I gotta. I gotta just start my. Open up my dive bar. Open up my dive bar, call the, the backfield, back and then we have craft cocktails, and we have you sign the menu. What would your what would your signature drink be? I like mules. Any kind of mule, or is it just like the ginger beer that gets you going, or is it just like straight up Moscow mule, or do you like some fruit in there? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. I do like some fruit in there. I like the ice, like. No, oh, like, that, yeah, the ice drinks. The, yeah, no, like it, the the ice in the drink matters mm -hmm. in a Moscow mule. Needs to be like a clear cube. Yeah, yeah. Are you a big old fashioned guy? And you know, I am. Will made me a really good old fashioned. Yes. Pressed. Yes, old last, fashioned press. Last Thanksgiving. Yeah, I think it was Thanksgiving. It was yeah. after after the Lions game. Yeah, that was a good game. Thanksgiving game coming up. Then I Irish goodbye. Yeah, yeah heavy. <laughs> <laughs> he smacked like he, two turkey our, legs. He's like, all right, I'm out. No Midwest <laughs> good. We got to get him caught up. No Midwest goodbye for this guy. He was uh, he was out of there. He's like, all right. <laughs> Uh, Time to go. Did the knee slap? All right. <laughs> uh, that's fantastic. Well, we did get you something on, you know, uh, thank you. We appreciate you coming on you know, the podcast. So I did want to give you this bad boy. It's one of a kind. There's only one like it. It's uh, probably, you know, a very cool award. Um, there's not many out there, but Sucker Crap Plaque. Thanks for joining us on the podcast. Look at that. Look at that QR code. <laughs> Yeah, so if you ever forget where you found your podcast, so you can click the QR code and it'll pop on right up there for you. Thank you very much. Absolutely, brother. Appreciate you.